Welcome back. The much-anticipated Man Booker Prize was awarded last night, with author Paul Beattie becoming the first American author to scoop the coveted award. Scottish writer Graham McCree Burnett beat off some of literature's biggest names, too, to make it into the final six. Well, it's authors like this who are inspiring the next generation of novelists, like Jennifer Loudon from Wishaw. The 15-year-old has dreamed of writing a book since she was a child, and this month, her first novel, The Key of Time, has been released. Claire McNeil went to meet her. Jennifer Loudon is an ordinary teenager, but she's just done something quite out of the ordinary and at the young age of 15 has published her first novel. So I got the idea one night when I was just doing my homework and stuff and um, I started planning it and I wanted to like, write the book and finish it during my summer holidays um, after third year. So that's what I did. <laughs> The Key of Time follows the adventures of Daniel, who transports to different periods in history. Daniel thought of his new life as he watched the trees speed past the window. He could only dread his destination. No when I first day. met Jennifer in first year, she told me she was going to write a novel. She's always loved to write. And last year it was really exciting to find out that she'd actually followed through with her dream and she'd done it. And a love for writing and a vivid imagination is something the St Aidan's High School pupil always had growing up. We did back to even primary school. She wrote books. Um, she was about seven. She was about mm -hmm. seven when she was writing wee stories about, like, say, her pets and all that, wee dogs and hamsters fish. and fish. Every everything. pet she had. And uh, she actually wrote a book when she was 11. She makes us proud every single day. She makes us proud every, no, every, proud every time. I mean, you know, really. Every day she makes us yeah. proud. Oh, she's, I mean, that, especially with all this herself, doing the whole thing herself, really. Surprised us and really... Totally on her uh, own, even, even to write thing. to publishers mm -hmm. and things. She surprised us, really, and now you can't be proud of mm -hmm. I love writing because you can kind of transport yourself anyway, and it's really... You can escape from anything and just put yourself into another world. For now, Jennifer has to focus on her higher exams and graduating from sixth year. But after school, she hopes to fill bookshelves across the country with her stories. Claire McNeil, STV News. Now let's talk a bit more about what makes a good book. Well, joining me is author Rab Wilson, a poet who writes in Scots. Thank you for coming into the studio tonight, Rab. First of all, as a writer yourself, how do you feel when you see people like Jennifer taking up writing? Oh, it's very encouraging to, to see youngins like Jennifer, you know, at, at such a, a, an early age, um, being able to write a novel, you know, incredibly ambitious, you know, she's set herself a high bar and she's, she's, she's definitely cleared it there. Um, so, you know, that's uh, tremendously encouraging for me to see young Scots, you know, being able to do that. Absolutely. Do you think there's enough being done in school to in, encourage children to, you know, take up writing and, you know, write a novel, for example, a length like Jennifer? Yeah, well, well, in my, my recent experience, and I go into schools quite regularly, uh, doing uh, workshops in language and creative writing stuff. Um, so just the other week there, I was in Sankar Academy uh, down in Dumfrieshire, and there was a whole group of kids, about 30 kids in, in the workshop, and we did a, a creative writing class, and there was a tremendous encouragement for the, for the teacher, Rachel Redgate, you know, to encourage these kids to get into writing and, and, and do creative stuff with their writing. And, you know, there was a real buzz in the room. So there, there, there definitely does seem to be, you know, quite a, a push on there mm -hmm. to encourage kids with literacy and, and, and creative writing in general. Your writing style is a little bit different. You write in Scots. How did you end up, you know, putting pen to paper? Well, I suppose I, I, as a young man growing up in Ayrshire, um, initially, you know, I played in sort of pop groups. You envisage yourself as being a pop star when you were young, you know. And uh, so I played in sort of pop groups. So I started trying, you know, songwriting, writing sort of pop songs, which really didn't go anywhere. And if you ever heard any of them, you'd quickly realise why, Amy. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, from, from there, I, I, as I, I, a young man in my thirties, I became more interested in the uh, well, Burns was the uh, Burns Suppers and Robert Burns was, was very popular in Ayrshire. Um, and I get interested in going to Burns Suppers and reading Burns' poetry. So marrying the two, you know, I had a, a facility with reading and writing. And I thought, well, I'll have a go at writing poetry. So I was moved to write my poetry in mm -hmm. Scots and follow that that great tradition. And that grew and grew over a decade or so. So I've got, you know, many books published now. 
Thanks, Dr. Well, we'll come back to you in just a little second, mm. but it's not just the Scots dialect that's appearing in print. A much-loved children's classic has been rewritten with a Glasgow tongue. Aline C. Smith has translated Julia Donaldson's The Gruffalo into Glaswegian. She took on the project as she believes it's important that Scottish dialects are celebrated and preserved and not just played down as slang. Do you fancy some scran in my high-rise trios? No, you're all right, Aldrin. I'm pure brand new. I'm having my tea with a gruffalo the new. We, we used to get a row for saying I instead of yes. It was like there was a proper way to speak and that your own dialect was uh, slang. And uh, there's now, I'm really glad to see a movement to say, wait a minute, these words are wonderful. These words are rich. And, uh, you know, a Glaswegian is as rich as, as any dialect out there. I always think we've got, we've actually uh, trilingual in Scotland. We speak English, we speak Scots, and then we speak our own regional dialect. Pure dead brilliant, says the Gruffalo. A moose, just for me. Some pan bread for you will be good for my tea. The moose particularly, the mouse boys. I wanted to have a wee gallus moose, you know, have a wee wide sort of thing about him. Um, because if he came to Glasgow, and he would happily take on a gruffalo. And uh, Big G just came out of nowhere one day, and I thought, oh, that's what we told him. Eh, Big G, I'm the top man around here. Yeah. And all those sort of things. I, I, really I really enjoyed the fun of that. I liked about when the mouse was and telling everyone that the Gruffalo was real, but it wasn't. My favourite bit was when um, the mouse tricked the Gruffalo to try and get him to go away and not eat him. My favourite thing about the Gruffalo was he was saying there's no much thing as with a Gruffalo. Well, we've got the book here actually, Rab. I think I'll have to give it a wee read after hearing that. but. What do you think, you know, Elaine C. Smith's work and taking a real popular book like The Gruffalo that every kid today knows and writing it in Scots, do you think, you know, that, that helps to, you know, keep the Scots language and regional dialects alive? Oh, it's, it's a recht affirmation that, that the Scots language is an integral part of Scots culture. I mean, it has nothing to do with, with, with nationalism at all. It's to do with culture and literature. You know, this is hundreds and hundreds of years mm -hmm. of Scots language, and here we're seeing it right now being written here today and being preserved for the future generations of Scots to, to use and enjoy. So I think it's an incredibly important thing that Elaine has done here. Was it a conscious decision for you to, to write in Scots when you started? Oh, die, because I mean, this was the tongue that I grew up with in, in East Ayrshire, in New Cumnock in East Ayrshire, um, every day. You know, I heard Scots words and the way I talk is the way folk talk in East Ayrshire. So, why no? Write in that voice, the, 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 the tongue that you, you grew up with. You just mm -hmm. be natural and write in your own tongue. Mm -hmm. And I mean, we've got some popular kind of children's books like Roald Dahl, mm -hmm. every child reads his books and they've been turned into to Scots language. You know, what, what's that like for children? Is it easy for them still, you know, to, to get a grasp of Scots language, do you think? Oh, I think so. You know, when I go and do these workshops, and, and kids love Roald Dahl, you know, he's known everywhere. The, the twits is, is the Egypts, you know, <laughs> and uh, George's Marvelous Medicine, Geordie's Minging Medicine, and this brand new one, the sleek at Mr. Todd, the Scots word for fox, uh, a Todd. And uh, this one's just out, and I'll be going round schools getting kids to read this, and the kids will love it, you know, they really, it really comes alive to them and they, they totally understand it, Absolutely. they totally get it, Amy. Absolutely. Well, Rab, thank you very much for joining me in the studio tonight. We'll have to have a read of those afterwards, thank you. Now, remember, you can get in touch with us if there's a story you think we should know about or an issue you want us to highlight. You can contact any of our reporters by Facebook or Twitter and keep up to date with all the latest on the STV News app. And that's it for the moment. From all of us here in the STV News team, do enjoy the rest of your evening. Thanks very much for watching. Bye-bye.